Hi everybody! It was mentioned in the comments of my last finished pages video, the pages I coloured in June, that you guys might like to see how I shaded my white flower, this white flower here on the Christine Karen page. So um, I've been through and I've looked through the Christine Karen book and there is in fact only one only one um, guy in here, one man, and this is the wizard, and I already have plans for him. And he doesn't have any flowers, so I can't be colouring in this book. So um, I've printed out this page, which is one of the few pictures that I could find with uh, a man and flowers. So this is from a book called Efflorescence. It's by Thimsy. Her name is Catherine Perry, but she goes by Thimsy. And this book it's been in my Google Drive for ages. I'm not sure if it was given as a freebie during COVID, which quite a lot of books were, or whether I won it in a contest, because there's a couple in there I actually won. So I'm not exactly sure where I got it from, but it's called Efflorescence. It's by Thimsy. Um, if I can find any links to her Etsy or Patreon or anything, I'll put them in the description below. But yeah, this book is quite good because there is quite a few pictures of men in it with flowers and um, quite cool pictures of men. So anyway, I found this guy. And I've coloured most of the rest of it with just the flowers here. And I thought I'd show you on here how I shade my flowers. And as you can see, the flowers do look slightly different to the ones on this paper because this paper is more of a kind of warm cream colour. And this is obviously white, but the colours that I used are the same for shading. But this one has more of a warm kind of cream tone. And these ones are more bright white. And I realise that I'm probably going to have to press or make my colours a lot darker than how I would usually do them because yeah I've shaded this flower started with the grey and you can barely see it so I might have to mess with the colours in editing or I might have to press a bit harder than usual to see whether you can actually see me using these colours hopefully you can fingers crossed but I will show you how I usually colour white flowers which is really quick and easy and it's a bit cheaty really but it does look quite good it's um, how I coloured those white flowers there on the white paper and this is exactly the same colours but on the cream paper so it will look slightly different but the colours will be the same. <laughs> okay so I'll zoom us in and we'll get started. All right there we go. Um, I will have to say I'm no expert at colouring flowers. In fact flowers is one of the things that I really colour least but <laughs> this is a really quick and easy way to colour white flowers that I usually use. And I don't always use these exact colours. Usually I go with whichever pencils I've been using. They're just laying on the table and you know I think they might work so that's what I usually go for. So I have here, I think they're the same colours. I'm pretty sure actually they're the same colours I used in the Christine Karen book. For shading the flower I use this is smoke grey from Arteza. Smoke grey from Arteza. Unfortunately, my colours have all rubbed off, but that is smoke grey. That's one of my favourite kind of cool greys, kind of a bluey grey, which I think works really well for colouring white flowers or anything that's white, really, because I use the same kind of technique for colouring anything that's white, um, kind of clothes or fur or, yeah, these are the same colours I use. And then a light blue. Um, the lighter, the better, really. Um, it just wants to be a really hint of colour but as I said I'm probably going to have to make these colours a lot darker than what I would usually do them just so you can see them on the paper hopefully. I've got the lamp on um, I don't know if that would be helping or hindering but I've got my ring light on hopefully that will be lighting it up as well and helping so yeah this is Cobalt Turquoise that's Castle Arts Gold 040 I think that is GP I've also got my Polychromos White you can, you don't have to, but in your darkest shadows you can use a darker cool grey. So I've just got a Castle Arts Gold there, cool grey 065. You don't have to use that, um, but sometimes it helps define these darker shadows. And I think in the Karen, uh, Christine Karen book I used the Burnt Umber as well, just for little, as I've mentioned before, if you put little kind of brown bits along the edges of leaves sometimes, or petals, it makes them look a bit more natural because it looks like the bugs books have been chomping on them so yeah you can add a little bit of the brown around the edges if you want to you don't have to and I haven't here I haven't there and that's how they've turned out but I think I did in the Christine Karen book add a little hint of the brown and it did work a lot better in there because the paper already was cream so yeah and before I start as you can see here I've added these little bits of watercolor around the edges of the frame and that's because if you want your flowers to be white and to really stand out, they need to stand out from the background. So everything around them pretty much needs to be coloured in. You can't, well, you could draw white flowers right on top of white paper, but they don't show up too well. You see that the petals do go over the edge there and don't have anything behind them. So you can see the difference where there's nothing behind the petals. 
and where there is the brown behind the petal it does help the colors stand out so i did do these little bits of watercolor um just blob some watercolor on around the edges there just to make sure that the white flowers might be really standing out and i've used a warm color this kind of brownie um yellow ochre kind of color and that's because i wanted it to contrast with the flowers because for the flowers i'll be using cool gray and blue which are cool colors so that will make it stand out even more with the contrast between the warm colors for the background and the cool colors um i know there is some blue in the background there but we're we're not really going around there the flowers around here where all the warm colors are so that contrast should help them stand out as well as i said hopefully these colors will stand out i will go slightly darker all right before i start with the shading you'll see that these centers of the flowers are already done and that was with um i was using the skin tone set trying to put bring in all the tones from the skin tone set as much as i could to get a nice um kind of kind of browns and creams range of colors going on so the very center of the flower the pale color that is primrose that is Y195 and I think I, I pick, actually picked up the wrong marker. So the dark brown you can see shading in the flowers. I think it was the, the chocolate there, E342. I'm pretty sure it was that. But you can just shade it with the primrose yellow and then add a little kind of shadow on the on the kind of ball in the centre there. You can add that with pencil. That doesn't really make a lot of difference. You can colour the centre as however much you want. And I will show you how I shaded the flowers now, finally, the point of the whole video. Um, yeah, the first colour I use is the smoke grey. So there's any kind of light, kind of um, cool grey. This is just my favourite at the moment. And I'll go over this kind of darker than I normally would, just so you can see how I do it. And I'm just adding it down inside the centre of the flower, mainly, which is where the shadows would be. And as we're going to be going along these lines, if you can see those lines, those are going to be gone over with white pen. So there needs to be some colour around there so that we, our white pen will show up. So I'll give a little bit of the cool grey. And to make the petal look as if it's kind of curving downwards there, I've had, how I did it in the, the Christine Karen book, is to add a tiny little bit of shadow around the edge of the petal leaving a highlight as i usually do like on faces and stuff but yeah add it along the edge there so that kind of makes it look as if that edge of the petal is curving away um try and show you again here around the edge of this petal leaving a highlight around the edge and adding the gray just like that and normally I, that would be a lot lighter and i would blend it blend it out a little bit but don't go too far into the flower because we're going to need some space to add a tiny bit of blue so yeah with the with the gray just adding in my shadows you don't have to do this kind of um shading along the edge of the petal but as i did it on my other flower i'm just <laughs> doing it to show how i did it and as you can see, the flower is looking a lot more 3D there. Just by adding those, those little shadows. You can. You don't have to, but sometimes I go in with, the, with a darker cool grey. And just add where the shadows would be really darkest. A little bit of that. Without pressing too hard, just to show the shadows are actually deeper there. And the petals would be casting shadows onto each other. My light from this for this picture is coming top right as I usually do. So the petals would be casting shadows down towards bottom left. And that's just so once we do the white lines around the edges of the petals that will be standing out. Then I was taking my, my light blue. This is Cobalt Turquoise from Castle Arts Gold. Going over the cool grey and slightly over the edges so that it shows over the edge of your grey. Oops, this point is really wobbly. <laughs> Might need to sharpen that just one second. 
yeah that pencil was a little bit broken there so I can yeah, quick sharpen and yeah just kind of going over the gray shading that we've done and adding a little bit kind of over the edges so that the blue does show as its own color hopefully this is showing up on camera <laughs> I might need to mess with the colors in editing and kind of darken the um, the camera or something to show you exactly what I'm doing. This is fairly dark on the actual picture I've got in front of me. It is looking fairly dark. Yeah, we're just adding the blue there, going over the grey, making sure we do leave some of the white paper showing. There we go, like that. And I'll just add a little bit of these other flowers exactly the same. And first with the cool grey. So this uh, smoke grey is my favourite cool grey at the moment. <laughs> I'm trying to press quite hard so that hopefully these colours do show up. Hopefully they will. It is quite hard to show white <laughs> on camera, especially this camera. It's not the most sensitive camera in the world, my tablet, so try and make sure there's um it's there's a bit of shadow along these edges because as I said we are going to be going over those edges with the white gel pen. the blue there again this would this would be blended a lot better <laughs> would be a lot lighter because I'm trying to get this to show up on camera you'll be able to see there is a difference between the flowers I did and this one where hopefully the colors are showing up a lot better and then after that, after that, I take the white. This is my white polychromos that I'm using as a blender quite a lot lately. And just go over the whole, the whole petal, the whole flower. I usually do it petal by petal just to, just to keep it, each area separate. But if you go over the black lines, that does fade those out, which will help when it comes to going over with white gel pen. And it does blend the colours and it does change the paper co colour ever so slightly, I found. I don't know if it, if it adds a slight, very, very slight creaminess to it, but it does change the paper colour. Maybe that's because I'm going over all the other colours and blending them all together, but it does seem to make a difference. So I do go over the whole petals with the white pencil. I'm hoping this does show. I'm hoping these flowers are big enough to actually get the idea across. Um, that's all I need really is to get the idea across. And the colours that I've used, like the light blue and the grey. You don't have to use the blue because some some kind of blossoms, they're, they're white, especially kind of berry blossoms, but they've got a very slight hint of green to them. And I haven't really tried it, but I'm presuming that you could use a kind of a I don't know it'd be a very pale kind of spring green I suppose and use that instead of the blue I haven't tried that but but yeah that might work quite well instead yeah there we go I've gone over those with the whites and now all we do is go over our lines with the white gel pen There you go, all our white lines are covered and we can add a few little dots to the centre. There we go, that's how I usually colour my white flowers. Although I have pressed harder than usual in the hopes it will show up on camera. 
And look, it's something like what it does in real life. Because the camera does tend to wash colours out, especially if there's lamps on, but I'm thinking that if I just turn the lamp off, you wouldn't be able to see. Hey, there we are. As you can see, I have I have shaded those a lot more than usual and I have pressed harder with my colours just to try and get it to show up. You can see the difference between these and the ones that I did earlier. The colours are a lot paler. You can barely see the blue, but it is there. <laughs> this this I've pressed harder and the colours are a lot kind of deeper than I would usually go for because I was trying to actually show it on camera how to do it, but yeah. That is how I coloured my flower in my Christie and Karen book. And that's how I colour anything that's white, basically. Use um, a, a cool grey and a light blue and, um, and go around the, the white lines with a white gel pen. So hopefully that has helped. <laughs> Hope that's uh, explained my process there, even if I had to go a bit he more heavy handed than usual. You can get the idea, get the gist. I'll just try and show you a close-up of your flowers that I did earlier so that so you can see how the colours are have actually gone on gone on there. And unfortunately the blue is yeah not very visible on the camera. It is a lot more blended and a lot fainter, a lot uh, less pressure than what I've used here. But yeah, hopefully you can actually see how I've gone. And if you do leave more of the white paper towards the areas where the light would be hitting it, then that would that would show um, actually where your light's coming from. And uh, yep. So I hope you've enjoyed watching that. I hope it helps. <laughs> if not, let me know, and I will try and film it again with maybe bigger flowers. Um, but it is quite hard to get it to show up, especially on the white paper. So yeah, I'm hoping that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that at least some of you might find that useful. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you in future videos. Bye!